Hello students. Welcome to our video walkthrough of Students with Special Needs Concept Map and Lesson Plan Project Part 2. Now we're going to look at the lesson plan. So what I want to do is we already talked about uh, the instructions that are on your assessment page in your module for the week. And what we have here is the two parts of the assignment. Part one is the concept map and part two is the lesson plan. We already have a video and a written walkthrough of the concept map, which you will find on the module. And now we're working on part two, filling in the lesson plan from our concept map. The way that we're going to start this project is we're going to start with the template of the lesson plan. So if you click the template button. It should ask you to copy a document. This is what we want to do because we don't all want to work on the same lesson plan. So we need to make a copy. So you're going to go ahead and click make a copy. And it should open up your own lesson plan. So we need to first let people know whose lesson plan this is. So I want you to go up and change the name of the lesson plan to your first or last name or first and last name. So we know whose lesson plan this is. The first thing we're going to do is give a title to this lesson plan. So as it says here, you're going to delete this title and you're just going to type in, this is going to be third grade science. living things. And again, this is just the title so you know exactly which piece of the theme or the Common Core standard that you're actually using. So the content area says choose any topic that you want to teach. It's your grade level and content area. So again, I'm going to just take out this text and this is science. I'm going to go ahead and put my name in here. So this is all stuff that you obviously can do on your own. I'm just going through. So we have it for our walkthrough. Time required. So this just is an estimate. It's not being graded. It's just what you would think your best guess on how long it would take you to teach this particular theme, this particular activity, that kind of thing. So for example, I think the concept map that I drew, the lesson plan that I'm taking from it would take one day. And the grade level we said was third grade. And then the common core standard. So again, you can delete all this. And the common core standard that we have was living things have basic needs obtained from the physical environment. So that's my common core standard, everything that we've already done from the concept map. And then I need the learning objective that we used on our concept map. And that was to create a shelter for an animal based on its physical environment. Excellent. So here's where we're going to expand our ideas. And if we scroll down, we have a little bit of information that we're going to do. So from the map, briefly explain my idea and the, the ideas that you're going to teach or the big idea um, from this concept. And the big idea that we were going to teach is that we were going to use art supplies to build a shelter appropriate for a selected animal. So that's the kind of the big idea. We're going to research the types of shelters that animals use and then we're going to have them use art supplies to create one of those shelters physically or on a computer. So, so far so good, right? Pretty easy. 
So now it comes to where you really have to think and use the research that you did in your concept map. So in here, it says for students with disabilities, and again, we all uh, went through those modules, the all types of learners. Maybe you had students with disabilities. Maybe you had talented and gifted. Um, you might have had intellectual disabilities, physical disabilities, learning disabilities. So you need to pull from that module and from the presentations, which should be in um, last week's uh, modules. So you may want to go back and review those. But you're going to just give me a brief but thorough explanation of how you're going to adapt building this habitat or this shelter um, with these different types of learners. So using technology, explain how you would adapt your activity to a student with a disability. And I can pick the disability because I might have some answers for one and you're not going to do it for every single thing. It might be for one student you have in class. Um, it might be for, you know, a couple different kinds, but we're just going to stick with one. Now, again, I hesitate to even give examples here because what tends to happen is students just mimic what I put on here. So in my explanation, I'm going to be very vague. And I do that on purpose because I want you to do the research on your own. So I'm going to use a very easy one um, for this particular one. Um, but what I want you to do is research something a little more um, technical, a little more um, in-depth than just a very easy version of some of these. So, for example, um, let's say a student has a visual impairment. Um, one thing that I could do is have the instructions read to the student by an adult or via the Google Read Write app. So very easy. Um, that's one piece. Again, there would be other adaptations um, for a student who is visually impaired. And make sure that you actually put what the disability is. So visual impairment. I want to make sure I specify what I'm adapting to. Um, So in this case, uh, the student is going to be able to hear the instructions. And then I would have other adaptations based on whether they would need help with glue and scissors and things like that. Or if I wanted to use an example, something online where they have an adaptive keyboard, for example. So again, I'm giving you a very vague, very easy version of this. But I want to see from you at least a paragraph in how that would be done. Okay, so a lot more than what I've given you here, and this is just for the interest of time. So list at least one technology used in your adaptation and at least one research source describing that technology. So for mine, the Google Read Write app is the technology. And the research source is Google Read Write App information. And what I can do then is have that information ready to go so I can copy and paste it right here into my lesson plan. Okay, so again, you're going to do a lot more um, depth in here, at least one paragraph, so I can thoroughly understand how you're using um, any kind of a technology in order to um, adjust to this visual impairment or the disability that you select. So let's move on to talented and gifted students. Um, for this one, what I'm going to do is uh, I am going to allow students to use Minecraft for education 
to virtually build a habitat that includes the type of shelter appropriate for their selected animal. And again, I would go on and explain in more detail what that means. And for this then, I would include a technology, which of course is Minecraft for Education. And the research source, I am taking directly from my concept map, which is the Minecraft for Education site that I had the video on. I'm just going to paste that here. So in my explanation, I would explain more about how they would use it, any requirements that they would have, how I'm expanding it, um, and any other methods that I would use um, along with this. So again, I want at least a paragraph here. Now, the one that generally gives people a little more um, issue because they don't quite understand what it means for cultural, ethnicity, language diverse students. So this is maybe someone, uh, a student who English is not their first language. Um, maybe there is a rich uh, cultural uh, significance um, or et ethnicity um, relevance that you want to uh, tap into so they can be proud of their culture and their ethnicity and their language. In this case, I'm going to have students select an animal from their native country or one that is significant to their ethnicity culture or language. This allows the students then to pick and research something that is significant to them that they can share about their heritage, about uh, maybe using the uh, language that is their native language to describe the animal or both English and let's say Spanish side by side to discuss the animal. Um, so this is one way that you can use uh, technology and research in order to do this. So you could also have um, students can include a version that includes names or phrases from their native language. So what technology can I use for this? I could use something simple like uh, Google Translator. And this could be to read the assignment instructions in their native language or to help translate words to use in both English and native language to label their shelters. And then as far as a research source, Again, I would just use Google Translate as my app. And again, I want to remind you that you would have much more information as to how you're going to um, include this information in here. I'm doing very vague since, again, this is just a demo and I want you to look up things for yourself. Then the last piece is where you're going to give your concept map link 
That way you don't have to upload two things into your Google portfolio. You would just um, do the concept map link here. So I'm going to go back to my concept map. And remember, I can find that link just by using the share settings. And here's the link. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to go back to my concept map and paste it. And I am done. So you want to make sure that you have everything filled in completely. Be very, very um, thorough when you're making your descriptions. Just cleaning up a little formatting here. And then what you're going to do is you're going to uh, bring this in as an insert uh, with your Google Drive because it's already in your Google Drive. You want to make sure that you put this into your EDU 120 share folder to make sure that I can see it. You can also add me here as a share person. You can use my Gmail address. You can use my Owens address. Or you can simply put this as anyone with a link can view. So when you put it into your portfolio, it will allow for me to see it without having to email you and say, I can't see your, your lesson plan. So I can copy the link and then that is what I would put in my Google portfolio, just like we've done with other things. We just pull it right from the recent Google Drive documents. If you have any questions, please make sure that you give me a call. Um, contact me any way you can. I do prefer text so I can just answer your question very quickly. But that's it. That's the rest of part two of the assignment. Good luck. Have fun with your lesson plan activity. I can't wait to see what you come up with.